Ebenezer family and friends. It's so good to be back with you again as we're connected on this uh, virtual platform. Um, the Lord has been so gracious and so kind. He's been a wonderful, wonderful father. Any hallelujahs out there, you can put it on the chat. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, if you're here and you don't know Christ, I want to encourage you today to get a relationship with him. Uh, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God is raised him from the dead. It said you will be saved. That's our desire as we're growing in the Lord. And on our website, you can get information about that. If you're a first time visitor, there's information there. But most importantly, if you accept Christ in your your heart there there's information to help you to grow uh, into uh, a more fulfillment renewing your mind that's what we've been teaching on we want to grow close to the lord uh, we thank the lord for those who are uh, connected to us downloading our app getting notifications we've got so much that's going on on our website monday manna uh, at seven o'clock we've got our tuesday noonday bible study virtually uh, we've got our wednesday bible study at seven o'clock where we're going through the entire of the book of Luke. Then we have our in-person service on Thursdays at six o'clock that we're going through the book of First John. And of course, on Sundays, we have an 845 in-person service and a 1045 in-person service. And the Lord is just doing amazing things. I need you to pray. I need you to pray for direction as we go forth that more souls can be saved and brought to the knowledge of the truth. Finally, as always, thank you for your giving. Uh, God loves a cheerful giver. And as we purpose in our heart, to give. Uh, giving is just not monetarily, but giving is reaching out. Sometimes the best gift that you can give is an embrace of somebody, an encouragement, a fist pump, just letting them know, you know what? God is still in charge. Well, I am ready to get into the word and I want you just to be prepared and to thank God for his goodness. See you soon. Good morning. Good morning. Today I'll be reading from Proverbs. Eat honey, my son, for it is good. Honey from the comb is sweet to your taste. Know, know also that wisdom is like honey for you. If you find it, there is future hope for you, and your hope will not be cut off. Do not lurk like a thief near the house of the righteous. Do not plunder the dwelling place. For though the righteous fall seven times, they rise again. But the wicked stumble when cal calamity strikes. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> He promised us that he would be a counselor, a mighty God, and a prince of peace. He promised us that he would be a father that would love, would a love that would not cease. Well, I tried him, and I know that his promises are true. He's everything he said that he would be. And the finest words I know could not Begin to tell what Jesus really means to me. For he's more wonderful than my mind can conceive. He's more wonderful than my heart and believe. He goes beyond my highest thoughts and fondest dreams. He's soul ever longs for everything that he promised and so much more more than amazing 
more than marvelous, more than miraculous, could ever be. He's more than wonderful. That's what Jesus is to me. Conceive. He's more wonderful than my heart and believe. He goes beyond my highest hopes and fondness dreams. He's a He's everything that my soul ever longs for. Everything that He's promised, and so much more, more than amazing, more than marvelous, more than miraculous. Could ever be, he's more than wonderful. That's what Jesus means to me. Anybody happy to be saved? We've been talking about that. Just to have a relationship with the Lord. Just say amen. Any good, he is so, so good. But we're getting back into uh, renew our mind, uh, how we learn, how we grow close uh, to the Lord and um, how we uh, get to the finish line. That's that's the big thing. Growing uh, that we love him with our whole heart, mind, soul and strength. I was teaching in uh, Thursday Bible study and we we're going through the first John and, and it really struck me over and over again. You know what? The reason we love him is because he first loved us. If he hadn't have shown his love for us, there would be no love for him. So we're going to talk about um, that process of getting closer to the Lord. Uh, don't forget our Romans 12 too, uh, that we have been going through each Sunday and I pray that you've been reading it with me. We're reading it into our mind uh, to get in our heart. <laughs> I find that funny. Don't forget because we're going to get this. We're going to get it deep down on the inside that we can use it on a daily basis. So if you read with me that Romans 12 too, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. Hallelujah. God is changing us from the inside out. Well, let's go on to a New Testament scripture. We were talking about prayer on last Sunday in Matthew's gospel. Now we're going to go to uh, the, the gospel of Mark. I want you to focus in on that fourth chapter and 28th verse, Mark 4 and 28. It reads, For the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that the full grain in the head. Mark 4, 28. For the earth yields crops by itself, first the blade, then the head, after that the full grain in the head. I want to speak from a title today, The Process, The Process of Learning, The Process of Learning. Let's pray. Father, I thank you as we are entering to these scriptures today. Holy Spirit, we just welcome you. Um, even as we've been just encouraging the saints and uh, at the same time, there may be some that have uh, come in and are viewing and don't know you, Lord. They don't have a true relationship. I pray that today um, the light come on, that you open up their hearts, 
um, that they can truly confess with their mouth uh, that you are Lord God and Father you raised your son from the dead and you said if they believe in their heart and confess with their mouth Lord that you would make a change in them and that's what I pray today you said it's by grace through faith and not of themselves it's a it's a gift that they receive that gift today thank you for that Lord, for the saints, help us to walk closer to you. Lord, I ask you as we are in these scriptures today, Holy Spirit, would you please be our teacher, our guide, lead us into all truth. Have your way. Make this word so plain, so easy to be understood, that even a small child can be transformed to be like you. Thank you again for all that you're doing, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, I pray that you're ready as we get into this, this process, the process of learning. Uh, the time frame is about 31 AD. Jesus is well uh, into his ministry. He's been teaching uh, like none other. Miracles are being shown. Uh, but in these scriptures, he has uh, got extensively into parables. Parables. And I'm telling you, I love parables because it really brings in um, the, the area that he's in, that he can use symbolism uh, to get a spiritual understanding. Uh, a definition, so you'll have of a parable, is a simple story used to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson. Again, a parable is a simple story used to illustrate a moral or spiritual lesson. And Jesus had just uh, finished talking about the parable of the lamp, and we transition into this to really get a blossoming of this process of learning how the Holy Spirit uh, really works in our hearts of the believer. Mark 4, 24. Then he said to them, Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you, and to you who hear, more will be given. Uh, I want to read that again because I, I want you to get this. I want you to get this in your mind. Uh, then he said to them, Jesus said to them, Take heed what you hear. With the same measure you use, it will be measured to you, and to you who hear, more will be given. Here's the point. Choose to hear choose to hear. Uh, here Jesus is bringing out the, the art of listening, how we hear, how we take in information um, that, that specifically he is giving us. Uh, the Lord put it on my heart, and in, in, in we know this, but so many times we miss this. You have to work to hear. Any amens out there? I'm telling you, in this society where there are so many distractions, I've taught on distractions over and over again, you've got to work to hear. Uh, all of us have, have been out to eat and uh, you see a family, maybe it's your family sitting at a, a table and uh, as they're sitting there, they have these devices, these phones and everybody is on their phone and some of them are texting across the, the table and, and they're not hearing any of the conversations that are going on because we're so distracted. You got to work to hear. Hey, this is important as we look at this scripture because it talks about the measure that you do. I, I have some uh, some measuring cups here uh, which are important because I got a one half and a one cup and, and what the scripture is saying is what you dig into, how much you want to get into, that's going to be comparable to the renewing of your mind. Sadly, some people just want one fourth a cup. There ought to be some ouches out there. We we don't want to dig in with that same measure. And so we limit ourselves when we can have a whole cup. Or you know what? I'm starting in my life. I want a whole bowl, bowl full. And if I can get something bigger, I want to be able to dig in with that same measure. Notice as we continue on here, uh, as we, we think about how God speaks to us, we have to lean into him. We, we've got to want more of him. I, I've got some some quotes on this hearing, truly hearing and listening. Uh, one uh, is just a proverb. It says, no one is as deaf as the man who will not listen. Isn't that good? No one is as deaf as the man who will not listen. They're all over the place. There's so many people that just refuse to listen, to really hear, to want their minds to be renewed. Here's another one by Stevie, uh, Stephen Covey. It, it, it really struck me. It says, most people do not listen with the intent to understand. They listen with the intent to reply. 
Any amens out there? I, I, I've been at fault with that. There's so many times that you, you're talking to people and everything and, and you have to work. Again, you got to work to hear, but sometimes we're working to just reply, come up with something that's clever. Uh, we may want to help them and assist, but many times, so often, we just got to listen. And God is saying, I just want you to listen. I want you to take in what I'm speaking to you so you can understand this process of learning. Uh, this final quote, it says, one of the most sincere forms of respect is actually listening to what another has to say. Brian McGill. Yeah, just listen. And God is saying, man, if you respect me, you say that I'm your God. You, you say that I'm your shepherd. You, you say that you love me, but yet you won't listen. You won't take that time to get into that process of learning and sit at my feet and get into these 66 books and meditate on it. God is saying, I want you. I want that relationship. And I encourage you, if you're not getting into the word, if you're not praying the way you should, God is saying, I want you. I want to grow with you and you in me and we as one. Even as Jesus said, the Father and I are one. This is a privilege to be saved. Look at Mark 4, 25. For whoever has to him more will be given but whoever does not have even what he has will be taken away man jesus is digging here here's the point which side will you be on Yes, which side will you be on? What will your, your choice be in this process of learning and renewing your mind? When we renew our mind uh, and, and, and we're sincere in God's word, he's going to give us more understanding. That's, that's what the scripture is bringing out. He's giving us more understanding of him. And, and the old saints used to say it like this, every day gets sweeter and sweeter than the day before. We learn about who he is. We learn about his love. James 1, 5 brings out this wisdom statement, if any of of you lacks wisdom, let him ask of God who gives to all liberally without reproach and it will be given to him. Isn't that good? As we ask God and we renew our mind and we grow in relationship, that, that process of learning, he gives us wisdom. We understand more. We're able to trust him more. It's the same principle as, as some of us are in exercise programs that they push you. They always tell you, you know, push a little bit more or or run a little bit harder or lift a little bit more and it's supposed to increase your strength or your cardio. We, we find that out and it's the same thing as we talked about that measure to grow in relationship. You got to push yourself a little bit more. You got to read a little bit more, pray more because it's about getting to know God and falling in love with him more and more or we can choose just to sit back. Jesus uh, uh, reveals, as, as you look at Revelations, as the Holy Spirit is speaking, we, we've got a picture of Christ coming into that, but it, he brings out, he said, I wish that you were hot or cold, but because you're lukewarm, I'll spew you out of my mouth. How many of us are living lukewarm lives simply because we're not choosing the right side to lean in to the Lord? Look at Mark 4, 26, as he continues to teach those that are around him and teach us, and he said, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is as if a man should scatter seed on the ground and should sleep by night and rise by day and the seed should sprout and grow. He himself does not know how. Here's the point. Scatter the seed. Scatter the seed. In, in the chat, could you just type seed? <laughs> it, 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 it's a powerful notion, and, and he's actually going to be building on this thought pattern of seed. He said the seed has been scattered around. It's been scattered around, uh, and through the night, it actually begins to grow. Paul the Apostle talks about this growth process in 1 Corinthians 3, 6. He says, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase. Isn't that good? I, I want you to hear that again. I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the increase, the process of learning. 1 Corinthians 3, 7, so then neither he who plants is anything, nor he who waters, but God gives the increase. There it is again, 1 Corinthians 3, 8, now he who plants and he who waters are one, and each one will receive his own reward according to his 
own labor, the process of learning. We, we've got to want more of God. And I'm going to say that over and over. We've got, we got to want more of Him because we love Him. We realize more and more of the graciousness that He's shown to us through His Son, Jesus Christ. The problem is, we, we don't know how long the, the seed will take to germinate. Yes, yes, to grow. Some some plants are quicker than others. Some are, are slower. I, I know I have a, a problem with patience, just waiting. Uh, uh, my wife and I, from time to time, have planted and put seeds in the ground. And I'm like, are, are they up yet? Are they up? I'm like little kids. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are they, are they growing yet? And it just takes so long. But please understand, God is willing to walk with us through this growing process. There, there's a plant called the, the, the psychic. And, and, and this psychic, uh, it, it, it it takes a long time. It says it's a palm-like plant of tropical, subtropical regions bearing these large female cones, and it can take over a year to sprout. Yes, a year to sprout. The, the, the question is, are we willing to give ourselves and submit ourselves to growing in the Lord? Look at Mark 4, 28 as he builds on this. He says, for the earth yields crops by itself. First the blade, then the head. After that, the full grain in the head. But when the grain ripens immediately, he puts in the sickle because the harvest has come. Here's the point. Steps to maturity. Steps to the maturity. Now, now this is this is critical. I, I remember I was in a, a church in uh, Chapel Hill and I actually was in the class and I taught this class. It was called First the Blade. First the Blade. And it was amazing to me. It was centered on this particular scripture on the learning process, the process of learning, how we grow in our discipleship to the Lord and how we reach out to others. This First the Blade. Uh, we start off as Babes, can you put in there? You can put a baby, B A B Y. Uh, babes, we we start out as babes in First Peter two one. Uh, this is heavy. This process of learning. It says, therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking. Can you just type all? I tell you, I'm going to work you today. All that that means that our, our first level of growth is actually laying aside these sins that so easily beset us, recognizing because now that process of learning, we're, we're learning about God and our relationship, but we're also learning about ourselves. We're learning about our flaws and our issues and our struggles, and we choose by the power of God working on the inside of us via the Holy Spirit to lay those things aside. There any witness out there that's thanking God for what he's doing on the inside. But notice this next level, 1 Peter 2, 2, uh, 2, it says, As newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby. Uh, we, we correlate that pure milk is God's word, it says, and that we grow just as a baby. But please understand, we don't stay a babe. Uh, we, we grow. We matriculate. First Peter 2, 3 says, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. Anybody know God is gracious, that he is so good as we grow in him, the process of learning, but we can't stay stagnant. We must continue to grow. And, and this is where I want the saints of God to get to this point of embracing that it's not just about staying in one place, but God wants to use all of us as a family to reach others. Each one reach one. We we talked about the, the topic for the year, repent and change. God wants a change so that more souls can be saved and brought to the knowledge of the truth simply because the, the darkness, the enemy is stepping up. Anybody understand? And he needs his saints to, to step out in him. Hebrews 5.12 talks about this. For though by this time you ought to be teachers, you need someone to teach you, again, the first principles of the oracles of God, and you have come to need milk and not solid food. How many have reverted back to, to babyism? <laughs> reverted back to those foundational points and God is like, our relationship is growing. I expect more out of you now. You're supposed to be an adult and, and when you become adult in the spirit, you're supposed to be able to teach and train others, but yet becoming stagnant doesn't keep you in one place. It takes you backwards. Hebrews 5.13 For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled 
healed in the word of righteousness, for he is obeyed the process of learning. Yes, as we renew our mind and get closer to the Lord, uh, God expects things out of us. Uh, just as uh, uh, my wife and I raised five children when they were little babes, uh, we expected a level and then they, they grew up more. We expected something else. As they grew up, we expected more simply because they were able to do it. They had gotten stronger. They understood more. This whole thought pattern, Hebrews 5.14, but solid food belongs to those who are full age. That is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil, the process of learning. Where are you in that learning process? Are, are you still a, a baby? And, and that's okay if you're a new Christian. This, that is the process. But, but if you've been a saint for, for 5, 10, 15, 20, 30 years, and you're still on, on milk, you haven't processed, your relationship hadn't gotten any deeper, and you're not a trained or teaching or, or sharing the good news, evangelizing to someone else, you've got to ask yourself, am I truly renewing my mind? As we go through this process of learning and renewing our mind, our hearts begin to see a dying world around us. We become sensitive to, to all the meanness that's in our world, that all the, are the young people that are going through and middle age that are going through and, and old people that are going through. Someone uh, taught me and I was listening they talked about that we're in a season of, of detachment where, where people are so depressed and, and they're going through, they, they feel like their, their self-esteem is so low. And I'm, I'm saying we, we got to learn who Christ is. And, and if we're not saved, we got to accept him because Christ is the answer. How Jesus speaks to his disciples in Luke 10 too. Listen to this. Then he said to them, the harvest is truly great, but the laborers, are few. Ask yourself, am I a laborer? Can you type laborer? I know that's a little longer word. Just put labor in the chat. Wherever you're sitting at, say laborer. Am I a laborer? It says the harvest truly is great, but the laborers are few. Therefore, pray the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Are you praying for that? Are, are you adding that to your, your, your prayers as you go in on daily? God, send out laborers. Be careful. Many people don't pray that because they don't want to be the laborer. Right? And I appreciate you praying for me as pastor and, and, and I'm doing what I'm, I, I've been called to do. But please understand you have a calling in your life. And it said that the, 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 the laborers are few, but the harvest is great. Do we see the harvest of what's going on? Going on, look at Mark 4:30, the process of learning. Then Jesus said, To what shall we liken the kingdom of God? Or with what parable shall we picture it? It is like a mustard seed, which when it is sown on the ground is smaller than all the seeds on earth. Here's another point: despise not small beginnings. Yes, despise not small beginnings. Now, I, I, I actually uh, brought a, a mustard seed, and you, you can't even see it. I'm going to put it right. It is literally right there between my fingers, a little mustard seed. Uh, this is a, an amazing thing because uh, God talks about the mustard seed, that process of learning. It doesn't start out big, but please understand when it starts out, it's small. If we have the faith the size of a mustard seed, it begins to blow. Blossom. Where are you in your growth process? Where are you? Are you still at the mustard seed stage when you should be at a full-blown tree? Uh, Zechariah talks about this, despise not small uh, beginnings in Zechariah 14. For who has despised the day of small things? For these seven rejoice to see the plumb line in the hand of Zerubbabel. Uh, they are the eyes of the Lord which scan to and fro throughout the whole earth. We give up too quick. And you put in the chat, don't give up, don't give up. Wherever you're sitting at, wherever you, you're standing, say, don't give up, don't give up, don't give up. The process of learning takes time, but don't give up. Keep growing in them. Now, we, we've all experienced memorization. I'm, I'm doing, I do memorization in the Bible. And when I start off, I'm like, I don't know if I'm going to get this. But if I don't give up, I, I learn one verse uh, uh, one day, and then I'll add to the uh, second day, and I keep going over it. And before I know it, I've got all of that. 
that within my mind simply because I don't want to give up. And it's the same thing with our relationship with the Lord. He said, don't give up. Keep coming to me. Keep loving me. And I love you. And you'll grow and you'll be amazed at how God will use you in various places. The process of learning. Let this process renew our minds on a daily basis. The apostle uh, John led of the spirit. He gives a stark warning though. Listen to this in 1 John 2, 19. They went out from us. But they were not of us, for if they had been of us, they would have continued with us. But they went out that they might be made manifest that they were none of us. The process of learning, we've got to make sure that we know that we know that we know that Jesus Christ is our Savior and the Holy Spirit is on the inside of us. That's the process of learning. And if we know that, then we know we have a calling in our lives and God wants us to walk more in Him. Uh, look at this, this, this final thought. Final scripture uh, as we think about the growing process, the learning process in our life. Mark 4.32. But when it is sown, it grows up and becomes greater than all the herbs and shoots out large branches so that the birds of the air may nest under its shade. This final point, embracing the change embracing the change. This is, this is significant as we're thinking about this scripture and this learning process. Sometimes people just don't want to learn. They don't want to grow. And, and the reason is it, it's going to require change. Some of you are dealing with that as you, you get older. There's, there's change. And so what we try to do, we try to hold on to our youth instead of embracing where we are. And, and, and it becomes conflict after time. Have you ever seen an old person don't want to admit that they old? It's okay. If God has allowed you to get those years, embrace it. Embrace where you are. You can be a, a, a good good looking old person. I, I was listening to this uh, a comedian and, and, and he said, you know what? I, I looked at my myself and I, I got on the scale. He said, I was 300 pounds. He said, I was 300 pounds. And, and he said, people were calling me fluffy. And, and then he said, I looked at myself. He said, I, I know I got to work on it. He said, I turned to the side. He said, you know what? I'm the skinniest 300 pound person that you ever seen. And see, it's all about perspective. It's all about coming to the point of realizing as we grow in the Lord and we have that process of learning, what is God doing in us? So we embrace where we are. We embrace the change. And even sometimes the change doesn't feel good. Sometimes it hurts, but we go, you know what, Lord, thank you. Thank you that I can sense your presence. Thank you that you walk with me. You talk with me. Thank you, God, that even I have chastening in my life because now I know that I'm a child of you. Thank you for all of this because now we're going through that process of learning. Uh, Medima and, and Muslim, I uh, that they, they write this theologian, they write this of the time of acts of the, the, the mustard tree seeds and, and how they sprout. They said mustard seeds will sprout quickly. Within three to ten days, they will grow rapidly at first, creating tender leaves that can be eaten in salads. Then the leaves will grow large, tough, and spicy. Next, the plants will bolt, creating yellow flowers that will eventually pollinate and develop seeds. There are wild mustard plants over ten feet tall near the Jordan River. I'm talking about the process of learning. Where are you in that growing process? Yes, we, we, we said that earlier, but, but, but are you just a, a germinating small plant where you just got leaves and, and we making salads out of it? Or if you going up and become spicy? Or are you that full blown at, at 10 feet and, and God is saying, you know what, I want to grow you even more. Or where are you in that growth process of learning? But, but I'm so glad, I'm so glad that God walks with us just as we have elementary school and, and middle school and high school and, and, and college and we We've got a post and a college uh, courses, all of these things. We are lifelong learners when it comes to the Lord. And then we can come to the point of going, you know what? Every day I'm thinking about the goodness of the Lord. Every day God has been good to me. When I think about the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me, our souls began to, to cry out hallelujah. That's when you come to the point in your life that you can have praise breaks when nobody else is praising him. You can be in your car 
thinking about this process of learning and where he's brought you from. Are there any amens out? Just want to thank God for where he has brought you from. That's why we can never forget that that process of learning was paid for. You say, Pastor, what do you mean by that? Jesus stopped here at this teaching, but he goes on and does miracles, signs, and wonders, walks on water. He heals the sick and he's able to multiply fish and bread, but I'm so glad he didn't stop there. But we find him in the garden of Gethsemane crying out. We find him betrayed. We find him going down the Via Della Rosa and they beat him. We find him on the cross of Calvary where he carries our sins and, and bears our griefs all so that we can learn of him where he cries out to the Father. It's finished. He dies on the cross of Calvary. They put him in a cold tomb. But three days later he gets up with all power and glory and guess what? He's ascended and seating on the right hand of the Father praying for us praying that we will learn of him that we will be a part of this process that will be used in these last days these dark times to share the good news to be an example of who God is will you embrace him will you embrace the chains Will you say God work your processes on me help me God to renew my mind being not conformed to this world, but being transformed by the renewing of our mind. That's where God wants us. He wants us to grow in Him, to learn of Him, and that learning will be evident within our lives. If you don't know Him, please, I, I beg you, I beckon you today to give your life to the Lord. Man, the only reason that you can even consider that is because of God's grace and mercy. He first loved you. Scriptures are clear. Confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God is raised him from the dead. Said you will be saved. Man, if you're doing that, if you've done that, I encourage you to connect with a, a fellowship, a local fellowship, where you can grow and you can encourage other people to grow and we can be the, the body that God would have us to be. I encourage you because Christ is soon to return. I don't know the exact date, but when I look at our society and I see all the friction, I can see that the enemy has stepped up his attack. But anybody excited that even though he comes to steal, kill, and destroy, God has come to give us life and life more abundantly. That abundant life is really to share true life with those who are walking in darkness. Dead men and dead women that are walking around who need the light of Christ. Will you be in that process of learning so that we can grow in God and share the good news? Man, I encourage you. This is an exciting season. There's so many people that are on the verge just wanting someone to speak Jesus into their life. Just wanting to see a true example of someone who's been changed by the power of God. Would you pray with me? Father, I thank you so much. I thank you for the souls that are being saved. And I pray for the saints. Lord, help us to get into this process of learning and renewing our mind. First the blade and this growth, Lord, this, this mustard seed. Lord, thank you for these parables, these examples that open our eyes, God, to what you're doing on the inside of us. Lord, help us to measure more, to want more. And God, you said that that would be returned to us. Help us, God, to be more like you. Thank you, God, as we go through these times of darkness and struggles that you said you'd never leave us nor forsake us. I thank you that you're calling forth the body of Christ to stand strong in you. Help us, Lord, to be on fire for you. Not lukewarm, but help us to be hot for you as we go forth in these days. Thank you for loving us. We give you praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. There is a balm in Gilead to make the wounded whole. There is a balm in Gilead to heal the sin 
music song. Sometimes I feel discouraged and think my hopes in vain. But then I hear the Holy Spirit reviving my soul again. Oh, church, there is a bomb in Gilead to make the wound at home. There is a bomb in to heal that sin sick soul and our bomb is Jesus and oh it is Jesus I sang that to mommy so many times she wanted to hear that song and oh it is Jesus it's Jesus She had him in her soul. <laughs> ah, because I have touched the hem of his garment and his blood has made me whole. And oh, it is Jesus, wonderful Jesus. It's Jesus in my soul. Ooh, have any soul because I have touched unnoticed the hem of his garment and his blood has made me whole and oh it is Jesus my wonderful Jesus, it's Jesus in my soul, for I have touched, have you touched the hem of his garment, the hem of his garment, and his blood has made made me whole and he touched me I don't know about you but oh, oh oh he touched me and oh the joy that floods my soul Ooh, when your body hurts your soul can feel good oh something something happened and now I know He made, he made me whole. 